Hello, this is a mycology tutorial presented by the USHLD baby reference, the pink illustrated review of microbiology by Cynthia Corney Listen, Bruce Fisher, and Richard Harvey. <coughs> so here we're going to visualize fungi. So in this tutorial, we're going to first start with the classification of fungi. <coughs> so we have the fungi classification is divided if you are going to see only pathogenic fungi because you need to know that many fungi are free living in nature so what we are going to work with are the pathogenic fungi <coughs> now the pathogenic fungi is divided into two we have the true pathogen and you have the opportunistic pathogen is it clear <coughs> and the opportunistic pathogen is going to be seen later down there so the true pathogens are divided into different um, um, different fungi. We are having the cutaneous infective agent. We have the subcutaneous infective agent, and we have the systemic infective agent. Now, for the cutaneous infective agent, example of microorganisms have that are at the level of the cutaneous infective agent that are affecting the epidermis and the dermis. That's the cutaneous infective agent are the epidermophyton species, the microsporum species, and the trichon phyton species, is it clear? Epidermophyton is going to cause what is called tinea corpitis, microsporum species is going to cause um, tinea capitis, and triton phyton species is going to cause tinea pedis. <coughs> Now, the next is the subcutaneous infective agents. These ones are going to affect the subcutaneous tissue and the hypodermis. So the hypodermis and subcutaneous tissue is going to be affected by the subcutaneous infective agent. <coughs> now, for subcutaneous infective agents, the microorganisms are the Actinomadura maduri. One, you have the Cladosporium, you have the Madurella grisi. We have the flalophora fla, um, and we have the sporotrichian key. So those are the different microorganisms involved there. Now, for the systemic infective agents, we have the blastomyces dermatitis, we have the coxidoides imidis, we have the histoplasma capsulatum, and we have the paracoxidoides brasilensis. Now, <clears throat> so we are finished with the true pathogens. The true pathogens are the ones that can cause an infection without uh, the patient being priorly immunosuppressed. Basically. But opportunistic pathogens are the pathogens that are going to cause infection if and only if the patient is, immuno in, is immunosuppressed. So now, <clears throat> let's visualize now the different pathogenic, um, pathogenic fungi which are opportunistic. So the opportunistic pathogens, you have the Apsidia corim bifera, you have the Aspergillus fumigatus, you have the Candida albicans, you have the Cribococcus neoformans, you have the Nemocystis gyroveshi, you have the Rhizomuco pusitus, and you have the Rhizopus orizi, basically, or the Rhizopus arizus. <clears throat> so those are the different this is the different classification of pathogenic fungi <coughs> now we need to know the forms of fungi so the fungi has two main forms is it clear? so the forms of fungi can, fungi can either exist in they are pleomorphic meaning that they can exist in different form so the first form of fungi is the hyphae form, that's the filamentous form, basically. The filamentous form of the fungi is a mold-like um, form and it is containing hyphae. As you can see, uh, they can exist in chain. With Those chains are called hyphae. The filamentous form, that is the mold-like form, exists with hyphae. Now, the second form of fungi, which is which are capable of budding, is going to be called the yeast form of the fungi and all these two are seen on the scanning electron microscope this one is on scanning electron microscope and this one is on light microscopy though there is no color here <coughs> so those are the two main forms <coughs> of the fungi <coughs> and
and you can see each of these forms can exist in the um, in the host cell. But usually, what you have to notice is that fungi live in nature more in the high fee form, and they are going to live more in the host in the the yeast form. But they can exist in either way around. Is it clear? <coughs> so those are the different things you must visualize here. <coughs> Now, what is the reproduction um, cycle of fungi? The, the fungi can reproduce in two main ways. It can reproduce via asexual reproduction and it can reproduce via sexual reproduction. For asexual reproduction, it's going to divide by mitosis and it's going to produce spores. Is it clear? So you are going to have one. So this, these are the different hyphae of the fungi. So let's say one hyphae of the fungi is going to produce a bot. So that is going to do spoliation, that asexual spoliation. One hyphae of the fungi is going to produce a bot that is going to do asexual spoliation. That bot is going to be called the conidiophore. Is it clear? Now the conidiophore is just a cone. And then later on, the bot is going to become a vesicle, is it clear? And then later on, that vesicle is going to contain many steric matter, is it clear? It's going to contain many steric matter, as you can visualize here. So those are many uh, um, bot-like processes at the level of the vesicle. And then at the end of the steric matter, you're going to have the conidia. Is it clear? Now, at the end of the conidia, you are going to have each spores which are going to be released to the environment. So this is the asexual spoliation to for the reproduction of fungi. <coughs> now, the next is sexual spoliation. So the next thing you're going to do is sexual reproduction of fungi. So that form of sexual reproduction is called sexual spoliation. <coughs> So in sexual spoliation, what happens is that you first have a high fee, basically. You have a high fee. So you see that at one part you are going to have a spore here, basically. So you have a high fee. <clears throat> so you can have you have um, at the level of the high fee, you have two main types of spores that are present. You are going to have the spore positive and you have the spore negative uh, um, part of the high fee. So, uh, the, so you have the hyphae which different bots. One bot is going to produce a spore positive, and another bot is going to produce a spore negative. Basically, now <clears throat> what happens is that the spore negative is going to bot out, and is going to come at the level of the spore positive. Basically, so the spore negative is going to bot out and come and fuse with the spore positive. So when it fuses with the spore positive, we are going to have this now, an ascus, is it clear? So the spore positive is there, the spore negative is here. The spore negative, which is the male, um, like the like the male gamete, is going to move out to the female gamete, which is positive, is it clear? And you are going to have this. So this is going to be called the ascus. Now you have two main nuclei. We have the nuclei here is a nuclei of the female. That is the spore positive, the the, the the positive spore. While the nuclei here is the nuclei for the negative spore. Now the, there is going to be nuclear fusion. After nuclear fusion, there is going to be meiosis, which is going to now produce the ascospore. Is it clear? So. Actually, you need to know that the mode of reproduction, sexual reproduction of fungi is actually different from that of man. In man, the spores are going to, to, to be produced via meiosis. Is it clear? In man, the spores, the, in, in man, the gametes, sorry, are going to be produced via meiosis such that the diploid form of the human being is converted to haploid form and then the child that is going to be produced via fertilization is going to be diploid. But in this case, the spores have the same number of chromosomes like the fungi, is it clear? So they exist in the diploid state as in the fungi. <clears throat> so if say the fungi is 2N, if this two, the, this, this two, the fungi is 2N, the two spores are going to be 2N. Now when they bind together to produce the ascos, they are going to become a 4N 
um, 4n garments is it clear so when they have 4n now division by male so by male is going to now divide now that 4n back to a deployed state of the normal um, fungi such that the fungi is going to <clears throat> the fungi is going to have 2n on each of these pores so each of these pores now is going to become what is called an asco spore is it clear and now what is the the, the beneficial aspect of asco spore is that one asco spore are more heat stable as compared to the the other spores here which were produced from a sexual production that's the first difference and the second difference is that the asco spores are the ascospore contain more genetic material which is capable of resisting the environment as, as compared to the simple spores is it clear so that those are the different things involved here so now this is an example of colony of candida abicans that has been grown that has been grown on the saboroid um, dextrose agar <coughs> So now let's see the different diseases that are that are being caused by um, the, the, the different diseases that are being caused by by the fungi. Now these are the cutaneous diseases. You start with tinea pedis. So tinea pedis is just is also called locally athlete's food. Is it clear? So it is you see inside and in between it, it occurs in between the toes where you have scratches where you they, they will you scratch at the level of the toes and you have plaques at the level of the toes which are which exudes some darkish liquid now we have tinea corpus which occur all through the body is it clear you have tinea capitis which occur at the level of the head we have tinea cruris which occur at the level of the groin and that's the inguinal region we have tinea ungum which occur at the level of the of the the, the fingers the nails so now <clears throat> those were the different cutaneous mycosis now to visualize this are now the subcutaneous mycosis the subcutaneous mycosis are going to be more deeper than the cutaneous mycosis for subcutaneous mycosis the first one you can have sporotrichosis we have chromomycosis and we have mycetoma you can see sporotrichosis is seen in this image chromomycosis can be seen in this image and mycetoma in this image those are the subcutaneous um subcutaneous mycets now <clears throat> this is a tissue section showing the body of sportrician key so you take you can do a biopsy and then to visualize this tissue here so when you are going to do a biopsy to visualize the tissue you're going to visualize that there can be sporotrician key that is bodying his at the level of the biopsy <clears throat> now this is a the a diagram to show systemic mycosis so we have seen the cutaneous mycosis we have seen subcutaneous mycosis now we want to see, see the systemic mycosis so this is going to show the life cycle of systemic mycosis it start by spore production the spore production at this so from the fungi are found the fungi can be found at the level of the soils the feces of bird the bats and the fungi can produce spore that become airborne is it clear so the spore can be produced either from a sexual spoliation or sexual spoliation and are present at the level of the soil or feces of the birds and bats so now the second is that we have the primary pulmonary infection so that is when the the, the patient is first infected is infected for the first time when the patient is infected for the first time we have what is called a primary pulmonary infection so when inhaled the spore are going to cause a primary pulmonary infection is it clear so the primary pulmonary infection can be one it can be coxidoidomycosis and it can be blastomycosis is it clear so when it is inhaled so do you have lung of the patient with acute um, um, coxido um, pneumonia is it clear so he's from blastomyces dermatitis so it is inhaled and enters in the lungs after the lungs now the it is going to be disseminated to the different part of the body 
basically and the fungi may travel to the to, to from the lungs down to other side of the body to cause infections wherever it wants basically so when it causes infection so this one is now a secondary infection primary infection is going to be infection at the level of the lungs now secondary infection is going to be infection all through the the, the different part of the body basically <clears throat> So when you have that infection can disseminate to the different part of the body or it can just stay at the level of the lungs. So the different diseases where uh, it can see that the catheter can be systemic. The first one you have coccidoidomycosis. And coccidoidomycosis is going to the primary infection to the lung is going to be acute coccidoidal pneumonia. And the possible site of infections when it disseminates, it can be central nervous system and the bones. Is it clear? Now, in this case, this is a yeast from the Blycetomyces um, dermatitis. Is it clear? So, causing blastomycosis. So, this is an example of a diagram. So, in this section, you are going to see know that what blastomycosis is going to cause possible site of infection at the level of the skin, the bone, and the genitourinary tract for systemic disease. The skin, the bone, and the genitourinary tract. This coccidoidomycosis is going to cause disease at the level of the central nervous system and the bones. Now, the next is this diagram is going to show um, a stain which is metalamine silver stain to see histoplasmosis. Is it clear? Histoplasmosis here can, can be seen with the metalamine, the metalamine silver stain. This one is this one, these two are just biopsies. Is it clear? Where you can see spherules here. <clears throat> now, the possible site of infections with histoplasmosis is mostly reticular endothelial tissue. Is it clear? So that's when you have histoplasmosis. So you have the liver, you have the spleen, the lymph nodes, and the bone marrow can be involved in histoplasmosis, the reticular endothelial tissue. Now, the next is the paracoxy, um, paracoxidoidomycosis just like coccidoidomycosis here um, it is the central fungal cells with a series of bots that look like spore of a wheel so you can see you can see it looks like spokes of a wheel basically so you have budding which can resemble which resemble the spokes of a wheel and the possible site of infection are usually the mouth and the nose so all this is for um, the true pathogens <coughs> Now, we have the geographic my, um, prevalence of coccidoidomycosis in the United States is more at this area, so at the, at the, the, the west of the, the of, um, USA. Now, this is the endemic area for histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis is more at the east of USA, while um, the, the, um, the coccidoidomycosis is more at the west of USA. <coughs> Now you see this is a radiograph, a chest radiograph showing um, the infiltrations of the, the lungs, the, the pneumonia caused by these forms of this um, this um, systemic um, systemic myset myset infection. So you can see reticulonodular infiltrate. So you have you have to know that what there are types that different forms of infiltrate. So when you have to, to know that interstitial lung disease, the peculiarity of interstitial lung disease is that there are reticular um, 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 opacities, is it clear? So there are going to be reticular opacities and reticular opacities are diffuse opacities as you can see here. So those are reticular opacities. Now we can also have nodular infiltrate as you can see there are nodules. You see reticular opacities and you can also see nodules. Those are characteristic of interstitial lung disease. Is it clear? So the bronchial alveolar lavage can be used in order to recover the blastomycet dermatitis. Is it dermatitis? So, so in order to visualize it on microscopy with potassium hydroxide staining. Is it clear? So this is just to show that there is an interstitial lung disease, and this is interstitial lung disease of a known etiology, in the, of the interstitial lung disease of unknown etiology. Sorry, is it clear? Now the next, 
They can also have a urinary tract infection. So the common imported reported pathogen for urinary tract infection in acute medical intensive care unit is Candida albicans. And usually, um, um, Candida albicans is usually associated now with um, hospital acquired urinary tract infection in patients who are immunocompromised. Is it clear? So these are the commonly reported pathogen from urinary tract infection, uh, urinary tract infection in patients with acute medical intensive care. So you can see the red. The first microorganism which is associated with urinary tract infection is Candida albicans in hospital acquired settings. Is it clear? So Candida albicans is the first among the hospital acquired urinary tract infection. After candida applicants, you have the enterococci. Enterococci is the second hospital acquired urinary tract infection um, pathogen. The next, you have now Pseudomonas aeruginosa. After that, you have Klebsiella pneumoniae. After that, you have Staphylococcus aureus. And after, you have um, coagulase negative um, Staphylococci. So, these are the major microorganisms involved with hospital acquired urinary tract infection. <coughs> Now, this is how Candida albicans resemble. So, this is just a high free form of Candida albicans. So, it's an example of an opportunistic mycosis. So, Candida albicans, you see that they, it is made up of oral candidiasis, which is also called oral thrush. So, this is oral candidiasis, it's called oral thrush. Now, the next microorganism I have to speak about is the Cryptococcus neoforma as being the next opportunistic uh, mycete. Is it correct? So, Cryptococcus neoformans, so the capsules are visible because they do not take the hematoxylin and eosin stain. So, you can just visualize circles, circles. Normally, with hematoxylin and eosin stain, um, everything appears either bluish or pinkish. Is it clear? To show that you are respectively basophilic or eosinophilic. But now, in this case, the Cryptococcus neoformans do not. Um, are not visible, are not um, are, are attaching with the hematoxylin and eosin stain. That is why they are going to appear whitish when you use hematoxylin and eosin stain. But the peculiarity is that the focus neoformans can be seen with the Indian ink stain. <clears throat> now, this is the next one the Aspergillus species. So, Aspergillus species can be visualized in this diagram here, and the disease is going to cause aspergillosis. So, aspergillosis on the chest x ray can be visualized here. You have fungus balls. You can see balls of fungi, like in nodular opacities. You're going to see nodular opacities and not reticular opacities. Is it clear? You're going to see nodular opacities. Is it clear? So, the infiltrations. So, that is it to, to show you that. So, when you see nodular opacities, you may think of two main things. It may either be a lymph node or it may be an, a, 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 a blood vessel or it may be an actual opacity. Is it clear? So, when you see nodularity inside the lungs, those are the three main things you have to think of. You have to think of a lymph node, you have to think of a blood vessel, and you have to think of an infiltrate. Is it clear? So these are the three main things in nodular opacity. So you can see nodular opacity here to which are character, which are character, which are characteristic football um, fungus balls. Now <clears throat> the next is rhizopus oryzae. So this is a high free form of the rhizopus oryzae. The next is silver stain um, is the one that is going to help you see pneumocystis geoveshi. So for you to visualize pneumocystis geoveshi, you can use the stain called silver stain and this is the peculiar appearance of pneumocystis geoveshi on silver stain. So pneumocystis geoveshi pneumonia is mostly present at the level of patient having AIDS. That is an opportunistic infection. Is it clear? So you are going to see, you see here that you are, there is a reticular, you have reticular opacity. So you can tell you that there is an interstitial infield, it is an interstitial lung disease. So you can have just reticular opacity that you can visualize here. So you see reticular opacities here. <coughs> So this is just um, everything. So we have just seen every most of the things involved with um, uh, 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 mycology. So from here we say thanks and for your kind attention. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for our channel Science Jamaica. Thank you.